Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will cover state in Jetpack Compose, which is a very important concept, which you might already know from other types of frameworks like Flutter or Web Development. State basically describes how our given UI looks at a moment. Because so far, we have only dealt with static content here in this playlist, so content that didn't really change. But in a in real app, we actually have dynamic content. So the user can interact with our content with the UI to actually change its appearance, to modify it, to make it look differently. And all these different values that describe together how our UI looks at a specific moment, that is called UI state. And in Jetpack Compose, when we have a composable function, and this composable function makes use of some kind of state. So let's say you have a simple increment counter. You have a button and when you click on that button, um, just a counter is increased and the button displays um, that corresponding counter. So first one, two, three and so on. Then this counter variable would be the state of the button. And because every time we press the button, the text on that button needs to change, which will lead to Jetpack Compose re-rendering that button because it needs to be redrawn in our UI. And this process of redrawing UI components is called recomposing in Jetpack Compose. So just that you know what I'm talking about when I will use that word in future. So what I want to do in this tutorial is a little color box. So just a box that if we press on that box, if we click on it, it will change its background color to any random color. And that color, that background color of that box, will be the state that we use here. So let's scroll a little down and create our composable function here for that box. Annotate this with that composable and call that color box. And I'll just pass a modifier here from Compose UI and set that to the default modifier. Modify what is wrong here modifier this one now I have it like this and now inside here we just have a simple box you already know that and you also already know how we can apply a background color to a box to any composable just by using a modifier um, dot background and here we can set that to a background color like yellow and now when we click on this box so we make it clickable then here in this block we actually want to change this background color of our box to a random color so how can we do that and well the answer is by using state we declare our state on top of our composable so here um, and we call that state color here because well it represents the color the background color of our box and we could create that state by using mutable state off and then set that to color yellow by default, for example. And then we could take that color and put it here instead of this color yellow into the background property by using color.value that just refers to whatever we put into this state or rather whatever value that state actually represents here. And then here in our clickable block, we can then just use color.value and reassign that value. So if you're familiar with Android and MVVM and live data, then you already know this concept of state because live data is nothing else than state. So here, here we can just set and assign a new value to this color state. And to randomly generate that, we can use color. And you can see if we press Control P, we have the option to pass floats here for each of those colors so for red green and blue that is between 0 and 1 so we can just use random dot next float three times here and for the alpha value we can pass 1 which is actually the default so now what this does is it defines a state here that is initially set to color yellow so our color box will start with yellow with a yellow background color then here we assign that state value to our background and whenever we click on this box then we reassign that state that color state to any random color so whenever we set this state here in this line what this will do is okay it will tell compose 
hey, the state changed, so our composable should actually look differently than before. So what Compose will do behind the scenes is it will recompose this color box, so it will redraw it on our UI so that it can actually show that state change. So it can actually show that color change and display that box with a different color now. The problem here now is that when this composable is recomposed, then this function is called again. And well, if this function is recalled basically, then we also reset this state to color yellow here in the first line. And that is not optimal, of course. So that would mean it wouldn't really work here because we always reset the, the color state here to yellow in the first line. To fix this, what we need to do is we need to use what is called remember. That is a lambda function that comes from compose. We need to import that, pressing Alt plus Enter. And well, it will just remember the value of this state from the last composition. So it won't reset that value on every recomposition. And you will stumble over this remember keyword here quite a lot in Compose. So it just means, okay, when this box is recomposed, we actually don't want to reset this value. That's all it does. And by the way, we should use this modifier here instead of the default one. Otherwise, that is pretty pointless. So now I will scroll up here to set content to actually um, use our color box here in our UI. And for the modifier, I will use modifier.fill max size to just fill our whole page. And let's now run our app. Take a look here. You can see our box just fills our whole screen. It's yellow by default. And when we click on it, it changes to a random color. So that is how we can actually change our UI by using state. So this was pretty easy so far um, because the state only affected this color box here. So when we click on this color box, then we also wanted to change the background color of this color box. But what actually happens if we want to click on this color box and we want to change the background color of a whole nother box? So inside of this composable, we actually don't have access to this other box. So let's say we have another box here. And let's actually wrap these two boxes into a column. And that should just fill the max size here. And then we put in the color box and we specify another box where we set the modifier to modifier dot not fill max size dot come on um, dot background. And now here we want to have that color value that we actually specify down here in that color box, but we don't have access to that. So we cannot write color dot value here because it doesn't know color. But before we fix that, let's actually also assign a weight here to this box of 1F and a weight to this color box of 1F. Weight is actually a property we can only apply in rows and columns. Um, so what this will do here is it will, in our case, weigh our both boxes here with the same weight. So both will actually get the same space in our column. So both will fill the same space. And I don't even know if this matters here, but let's move this fill max size after that weight and also specify fill max size here. And then let's next fix that little issue here that we don't have access to this color value. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to define our state not in our color box, instead here in our column. So here we have a val color, it's equal to remember, and set it to color yellow by default. Um, and of, not color yellow, of course, because we want to wrap that into a mutable state off, like this. And then we assign this color yellow here to our second box background here. And then in our color box here, we can actually remove that that state because now when we click on that color box, we want to change the background color not of this box, instead of this box. So we can remove this here. And what we will instead do is we will define a callback function to actually change the state of our parent composable. So we can call that, for example, 
update color that will take our color value that we actually updated here when we clicked on this box and it won't return anything so a unit and then here for the background color let's just choose any other color for example red because this time we don't change this background color and when we click on this box we now want to call our lambda function with our new color value that we randomly generated here so we actually just use update color and in here we pass that color value and remove this so then when we scroll up we will see okay it misses a parameter here our lambda function we can specify that here so that lambda block is now called when our color state changes when we clicked on our color box and you can see it gives us the new color so we can then use the color state we defined up here and set its value to the new color and now let's relaunch the app and see if that works so you can see we now have two boxes the top one is our color box and if we click on that then you can see our bottom box now changes the color and the top box doesn't and that is actually considered external state if we have this state here outside of our composable and what we had before if we change the color of the box itself then that was considered internal state but you can imagine for bigger apps doing it like this can become quite messy because you will have a lot of these state values and for that we will actually have other solutions we can just handle state in our view model which we will do later so that will be easier but it's still important that you understand this concept of state here so i hope you like this video if so please take a look in this video's description which will lead you to my website where you will find more advanced android premium courses that will bring your Android skills to the next level. So please leave me a like and a comment below. And I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.